Hey, what's going on guys? So it's time to take a look at another one of the Premium Bandai HG releases here from the Gundam Wing Side Story G Unit. This is the Low Booster, or LO Booster, I guess, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And in general, I'm guessing this is going to be very similar to the HG Escolapius, which we've previously reviewed. I love the Low Booster design though. It's super cool. Those cannons that it's got really reminds me of like the Zoids, uh, like, uh, is it the Genosaur or the Geno Breaker? Or like the Berserk Fury that have those big massive like energy cannons on it. Very similar kind of look to those, but really cool design. Let's go ahead and check it out. So first off, taking a look at the front of the box here, really cool artwork featuring those cannons and also the transformation. So the Aesculapius transformed into a kind of Zigok basically. Whereas this one has much more of your kind of standard wing Gundam sort of folding on its back and turning into like a high mobility ship kind of transformation there with some claws and everything. So again, really cool box art here with a lot of really nice light details on it. But going around here onto the side of the box, you can see that there is no number for this one as it is a premium Bandai release. But down here on the bottom, here we've got some images of what the kit is going to look like when it's all painted and detailed up. Really cool design here for this. I do really like all the equipment and the coloring is nice. So there's the mode change there into the high speed flight mode. There's a look at the back side of the kit. Over here, action poses showing some of the accessories. It's basically just got like a beam rifle, beam saber, shield combo, but then it's got those massive cannons. And it looks like we've even got effect parts for the thrust beam included in there, which is gonna be very nice. We've got marking decals, open hand included for the left side. And then over here, a look at your weapons. As I said, kind of standard weapons, except for the massive cannons there. On the opposite side, we got a big chunk of text there, which is all in Japanese and in English, if you guys wanna check that out. And then a couple more images here of the kit doing the pose from the box art there, basically both of the poses, uh, transformed and untransformed. Can we say untransformed? Does that make sense? Anyway, let's go ahead and pop open the box. And as you can see, a pretty thick box for this one. So we got quite a bit of stuff in here. The Escalapius was, uh, basically the same as far as I can remember for the box size wise. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the instruction manual. So we've got the same painted build here with some information on the side down here, some more information about the Gundam. On the back side, the marking guide here for us and the color guide is down here at the bottom with again, some information about some of the weapons there, the thrust beam cannon and the lightweight accelerate SMG. Opening it up on the inside of the manual, we have some of the construction is here in full color, right there, continuing on to the end, but the parts list, which is right here, you can see there's gonna be a number of x off parts there, quite a few leftover parts, probably from the Geminus runners. There's gonna be some leftover parts and then the rest of the construction here is all in black and white. Taking a look at our stickers then for the kit, we've got some foil stickers and unfortunately quite a lot of these, you can see a lot of these like metallic blue ones and the eye stickers are just kind of your standard ones for cameras, but then these dark red and white and gray ones are gonna be color correcting stickers of which there's quite a few. But then we do also have quite a lot of these marking stickers, which will look really nice, especially on the white plastic parts on the darker colors. These don't look quite as good, but you got those you can use if you want to. And one more thing here is those effect parts for the thrust cannons. Those look quite nice. We'll see how those look on the actual kit in just a moment. Right, so getting into the runners, then we have two uh, small runners here of Polycaps PC002 and PC123 for some polycaps in gray. Then we've got SB13 for our standard clear pink beam saber effect parts. Runner A1 is gonna be here in blue and red, and then runner A2 is a copy of this half of the runner right there. Runner B1 is going to be in a medium gray color there for some joint parts, hand parts, weapon parts, and then runner B2 is a copy of this section of the runner. Runner C1 is some armor pieces here in white, and then continuing the trend, runner C2 is a copy of this half of the runner. Then we're skipping ahead a little bit now to runner G1 for some of our specifically low booster parts. So this is a four color runner here with some of that dark maroon, yellow, and red and then gray for some of the parts there. Runner G2 being a copy of this half of the runner featuring some more of those red, maroon, and gray parts. Runner H1 being some more of the new parts in white here for the low booster. And then we've got a copy of the middle section of this runner. And finally, last but not least, runner I with a bunch more of that really nice maroon color parts there for the equipment on the back. And that's it. 
All right, guys, so here is the kit all put together. It's so cool, and I gotta tell you guys, this looks so great, and it's just because it's a design that I really like a lot, and I always thought that it was a really cool design way back in the day, and then building the old 144 scale kit of this, it's so great to see a nice new interpretation of this in a, like a good proper HG kit now. That said, I'll tell you guys, there are some pros and cons to this, although it's very small cons and a lot of pros with it so it's not perfect and the fact that it's a p-band I release is also a part of that but just stylistically just the way that the kit looks I think it looks fantastic in my opinion I think this one looks better than the Escalapias so I'm happy about that too and we do have quite a lot of stuff with this including some pretty nice accessories so let's go ahead and get into it but first let's talk about what is not an accessory and that is the stand so you guys saw I had it here on the stand and that's because the kit is going to have a pretty hard time standing on its own now I won't say it's impossible because if I do somebody's gonna come in the comments and say oh, I have the kit and it stands just fine you could probably get it to stand but it's not gonna be easy just because it's very back heavy and because of the way that the feet and the ankles are designed which as you can see it's because of the transformation we'll get more to that in a minute is kind of weird so it'd be nice if it would have come with a stand especially because it also transforms and then we could put the transform mode onto the stand as well but you can see we have an adapter piece here for the action base connection, which is strange. I really don't know why they didn't just make a hole here in the hips. I guess it's just to do with how the hips are designed. So they had to have this extra piece, that extra piece uh, attaches onto there, and then you can plug that onto a base. But as for our other accessories here, we've got the holding hands there on the kit. We also have a open hand for the left side or a rifle support hand and a trigger finger hand for the right side. And that would be for our lightweight accelerate SMG. Now we have a couple of stickers there for the camera, the red one that wraps around and the green sticker for the camera lens. This does also extend like that, which is a pretty cool feature. So even though it's an SMG, it extends into a more kind of longer rifle like that. We've also got the reactive shield and beam swords. The swords are the handles, at least are stored up underneath this shield right there. And we've got our two effect parts for those, as you can see, this is going to clip onto the arm and then be held in the hand like that. The handle does move a little bit like that. On the front side, that gray part is a separated gray piece, but the white part here at the end is a sticker. And then we've got our effect parts for the thrust beam cannon, which does look pretty nice. I mean, it's just nice to have some effect parts like this. Could they look better? Yeah, possibly. Sure, I guess so. Uh, but is it nice to have them included? Absolutely, so I'll take those. We'll see how those look on the kit here in just a minute. I just want to also mention a couple of things that you can make with the leftover parts, because we have uh, quite a lot of leftover parts, a lot of them for like the arms and legs and things, parts from the Geminess. We've also got the Geminess's beam rifle here. We've got the shield and connection piece there for that, and then you can make the full uh, Geminess head here as well. And like I said, there's a bunch of other scraps and bits that you are going to have left over. But on that note, let's take a closer look here at the kit. So there's gonna be quite a few stickers as we saw on the sticker sheet. You got stickers for the eyes and the head camera. All of that's pretty normal. There's a little tiny one there on the back of the head as well. And that's basically it for like the main body. All the rest of the stickers are gonna be on the equipment. So like these red stickers over here on the side of the fin, back here on on the backpack, those white stickers right there, those white stickers right there, these green stickers back here on the bottom of the backpack right there, these white ones up here at the top. So you guys get the idea, there's quite a few stickers around here on the backpack and the equipment there on the shoulders. Real quick on that note, you can remove these parts off the shoulders like that and they actually come off a little bit too easily, especially for how big and heavy these are. I wish that they were a bit more secure on there because they already kind of keep falling off on me. And I want to talk a little bit about the articulation here before we transform the kit and take a look at some different action poses and stuff like that. But one thing that I want to talk about here first is just the overall feel of the kit, I will say. And probably a lot of this is due to the fact that it transforms, but the kit does feel kind of flimsy in hand, I will admit. So it's kind of funny that even though it's a totally new and modern kit, it still kind of somehow feels like a 90s HG, like non-grade kit just because because of uh, just how the parts feel. I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe. It's not like there's any aspects to the kit that are particularly loose. Like I said, the shoulder equipment kind of comes off a little bit easily. And like here in the leg, if you're just like bending the knee, you might accidentally take that apart because of the transformation. And down here at the feet, again, just because of the transformation, this part there at the foot is just kind of loose on there. It doesn't exactly like click solidly into place. So overall, it just kind of has the feel that it's not gonna be as solid as 
and HG, like something from the Witch from Mercury line, another like 2023, 2022 uh, HG release from Bandai. It just doesn't quite have the same feeling. I mean, that said, I think it definitely makes up for it with just the sheer amount of detail that you have everywhere. And see, there goes that shoulder equipment again. But obviously, as I'm showing it to you guys now, this is just built up straight out of the box without doing anything to it. But there is quite a lot of detail around on the kits. I mean, once it is painted up and everything, I think it is going to look really good. But I'll come back to that. Let's talk a little bit about the articulation here. So the head will go up pretty good uh, up to there. It's just your basic polycap double ball joint there uh, for the neck joint, but you're really only going to just have the head on the top ball joint like that, able to go up and down. So pretty good range movement for that. I do like how the head uh, has this really cool look to it. The proportions of the head much better than the Aesculapius. I thought the Aesculapius head looked too squished. This one is nice and wide. The ears on the side of the head do look really cool. Everything on this one looks really nice. The shoulder joint here will swing forward and back like that. The arm is able to come up to really only about 90 degrees like that before it's gonna be popping out of that ball joint there. We have some rotation at the top and a double joint in the elbow, but it's really only gonna be able to bend 90 degrees. Unfortunately, you can't really get that double joint to bend any more than that, but some nice separation of like this separate part there for the elbow armor, which is pretty cool. We do have a little bit of an ab crunch here in the stomach section for that to bend forward and back like that. You can also rotate there at the middle as well, of course. Around here at the backpack, it's kind of mostly for the transformation, but those parts do fold up and there's kind of this whole part just kind of folds around and everything. As you can see, while we're here, moving down to the skirt armor, this back skirt is just on a little ball joint right there. So that's gonna move around all over the place, kind of annoyingly so, but you can move that around as just one big piece. The side skirts will do the same. You can move those around. You can only lift them up to about here though. So that's gonna, a little bit limit like the outward movement of your legs, but not that much because you can also kind of just rotate that to the back a little bit and it's plenty out of the way. I feel like the front skirts are separated like that so you can move them individually up and down. I do like the little added detail like the fin on the front skirts is pretty cool. It matches with like the, the fins on the knees and the sides of the leg. Very cool look, kind of reminds me a bit of the Curios, but cool design with like the little fins on it and everything. That said, to bring the leg up to the front, it can even come up 90 degrees, so it's gonna be pretty limited as far as the upward movement there. But then at the knee, you do have a double joint, which is gonna give you a nice full bend there for the knee joint. Again, that's kind of due to the transformation, but we got some rotation there at the top of the hip. Going down here to the ankles, then the ankle will move forward and back like that side to side a little bit and up underneath the feet. Yeah, it's gonna look kind of weird just because the foot transforms this part of the toe transforms there like that. And then of course about the reactor units themselves here so they can rotate there at the connection to the shoulder. This part here on the side can open up like so. So that's meant to open up a little bit and then these parts can pull out to separate a little bit. So you'll kind of open them up a little bit and it's gonna be just a slight movement out, just big enough, there you go, you can kinda, I'm not sure if you guys heard the click, it's very faint, just big enough for you to fit the effect part into there and then you close it again and then you can just basically angle that to the front like so, but like I said, we'll see that here in use in just a second. All right, so here is the transformation and like most of the transformations that exist in the Gundam Wing universe, it's pretty goofy in that it's basically just like your kind of legs folded up and the Gundam just kind of flying uh, straight with its backpack uh, folded out or something like that. In this case, you basically just have those parts of the backpack that are folded up into the front and the arms are just straight back and the legs are just folded down underneath and they do form these kind of interesting claws that you get there from the folded feet that make kind of interestingly add to kind of the bird mode, I guess, sort of transformation of that. But goofy as it may be, it's a pretty simple transformation and it's cool that it can do it pretty easily. You don't really have any issues with that. It stays in the transformation, you know, nicely. It's just as solid as it is in the uh, mobile suit form and it doesn't involve any parts form or anything like that. It is fully transformable, so it is nice anyway. Overall, just as a quick breakdown, on the con side, it is pretty sticker heavy. There's a good amount of stickers on there and even with the stickers that it has, it's still missing a lot of little color apps. So if you do want this to be completely color accurate, Accurate. You are going to have quite a bit of work cut out for you, but that is sort of a testament to just how much detail that this kit has. But just to sort of bounce back and forth between the pros and cons for a moment, yeah, one of the pros of this kit is just all of the detail that it has. So it's got a lot of really great de detail on there, definitely more than your standard HG. That just means that, you know, you're going to have a lot more detail painting to do. You know, the kind of minor cons for this being, number one, it doesn't come with an action base, which I do wish that it would have. Number two, it does feel a little bit flimsy in hand, although, like I said, it's 
it stays together pretty well. It's not like you have parts falling off or anything like that. But lastly, I would just mention that there are a couple of points of the articulation that I wish were a little bit better. Uh, the hips, the elbows, these are areas that will limit you slightly just in terms of the posing options that you have available, just how dynamic you can get the poses to be. But that said, I think it is still able to pull off plenty of poses without too much issue. It still is a good looking kit. And just to then end on the positive note, I think overall it is still a very positive kit. Like I mentioned the details, the overall proportions and the design of this, it's a really good looking kit. At the end of the day, it is fully transformable. It comes with a good amount of stuff in there. It's cool that you also have the addition of the effect parts for the thrust beam cannons. Those could be better, but they look nice. It's nice to have those included in there, so I'm happy about that. It's always a shame that a new kit like this is going to be coming out as a premium Bandai exclusive and not something that's going to be available to everyone easily. But I think this is going to be a kit that is probably not going to appeal to everyone necessarily. And if you are a fan of it, if you do think that it looks cool and you want to get it, I would say definitely go ahead and get it. But if you're not particularly that into it, I would say just pick up one of the new Witch from Mercury kits if you want a good HG to build. You'll definitely have a really great time with one of those kits and spend a lot less money. So that would be my advice for you guys. If you want to check out some different kits or paints or tools or supplies, you can check out the link in the video description to USA Gundam Store down below. As always, guys, thank you so much for your support. Until next time, if you'd also like to like or subscribe, really appreciate it. I'll see y'all later. Have a good day, guys. Bye.